All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead. Today we're gonna be doing a little repair and upgrade video here on my CR6 SE. Most recently I was actually doing some printing for my up and coming uh, Soval filament video and I got one of the uh, notorious blobs uh, on the printer. Truth be told, it had never happened to me up until this point. Uh, when I took it off of the hot end, it actually removed the thermistor. Uh, so the thermistor was damaged. Upon trying to just replace the thermistor for whatever reason, it's just completely impacted in there. I cannot get the thermistor out. So what we're gonna do is actually swap out the entire hot end here, and we're gonna do some cooling upgrades. Uh, I did some research, a little bit of digging, and seeing that some people do some 40 millimeter upgrades on the hot end to help with the cooling. I'm also going to replace it with a Winson fan uh, for the nozzle cooling agent. It's gonna provide better cooling. Uh, the fans are gonna be a little bit quieter, and just see if it helps and how much it actually helps. So with all that said and done, I am gonna reposition the camera and let's start dissecting this hot end carriage here, get some replacement and upgrade parts on there, so let's go. So here's a POV shot of the CR6 SE hot end carriage. And seeing that people did a 40 millimeter fan upgrade on the hot end. Uh, so went on Thingiverse and found it and printed it. I uh, just printed that with normal PLA uh, with a little bit heavier infill just to hold up against temperature if it needs it. Uh, we also have the upgraded fan. So I got the original 30 millimeters. That'll just be a direct bolt in, but we're hoping to go 40. I also have the Winson upgraded uh, side cooling fans. Uh, that's to obviously cool the nozzle and everything. And then here are the 40 millimeters. Uh, these are also RGB. So hoping the 40 millimeters will work. And then obviously the whole new hot end assembly. Uh, this is really nice for the CR6 SE. It comes with a ton of extra nozzles. Uh, you can see here that it has both the heating element and the thermistor already mounted in there. And it has a bunch of extra silicone socks. This did come with a uh, extra Bowden tube as well, but I'm probably gonna upgrade this to a Capricorn tube uh, at the end. Go ahead and take the hot end cover off. Now they do make um, additional like covers that you can print and you can actually upgrade this to a dual cooling. Um, so it'll basically have like a fan here and a fan there. Um, I may do that down the road. I'm just going to see how well this upgrade works and kind of go from there. Once we have that off, just go ahead and snip this zip tie off. Uh, the great thing about the CR6 SE is just you just plug it in right there so it's super easy. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is just start unplugging all of this. Now, what I recommend doing is if you're not super familiar with all this here is, is take a picture of this so you remember where it plugs in because a lot of these plugs are all the same size. The heating element goes up top here so we can go ahead and unplug that. And the thermistor has already been uh, removed. Uh, the thermistor goes right next to it. The heating element and then this is the thermistor. I had already unplugged that because it got yanked out when I removed the uh, PLA blob. So the fans are next to each other, the heating elements are next to each other, everything else we are not going to touch. So I'm gonna take the fan off because we don't really need it. Need this shroud. Here's the adapter. Obviously we can't put this right on here because it'll melt. <laughs> So we have to space that out. Just a heads up, if you want to use that factory shroud, you're definitely going to have to grind it down so it fits the shroud. If you do it with the uh, full size of it, it's not going to fit with that 40 millimeter fan. Grind it down to about there and you should be good to go. So these are the factory screws and they actually will fit and reach all the way back. Start taking uh, this whole hot end off. So like I said, thermistor removed, uh, heating element cartridge is right off to the side. So I'm going to remove the pin that's holding the Bowden in. Now, when you have a thermistor that goes out, it won't allow you to heat this. So if I try to turn this on and heat it, it's gonna fault out the system and the printer's just gonna keep restarting. So we just need to basically remove uh, everything uh, as it is cold, uh, which doesn't really matter. It only matters, it needs to be hot when we reinstall it. This tube might be, yeah, so if you're yanking on your tube, it means there's a really good seal there. Uh, I'm just gonna remove it from the coupler here. I have to do a little bit of yank in here. Yeah, this seal is ridiculous. So we're probably gonna have to replace this whole uh, tube here, which like I said, is okay. So I'm just gonna unscrew it here from the extruder. Uh, but at this point, 
Uh, if you can't get your tube off, like I said, we'll have to uh, replace that tubing or maybe you can always hit it with a torch or something, but you wanna do that after it's off so you're not melting any wires. Uh, but then on top here, this is just the main screws here that are holding the hot end in. The CR6SE, if you guys have one and you do run into clogging issues, uh, these two screws right here, these are basically what connects the nozzle, the throat, and then the tube. If these screws come loose, they're, they're separation, and that's often what causes clogging. So uh, always check these lead screws. Uh, there's a really tiny Allen wrench right here and you just go up and tighten it. A lot of times what people will do is put thread lock on here uh, to keep it from coming off. Understand if you do that, you're probably never gonna be able to get that screw off. Uh, I know, cause I did that. <laughs> so uh, the good thing with the uh, parts for the, the CR6 SE is they're really not that expensive. Uh, that box that I showed you, uh, that whole thing was like 25 bucks. So. so now our hot end, our old hot end is completely disconnected. Uh, again, giving you a shot of those screws that connect the nozzle, the throat, and the bow. Uh, you always just wanna kinda size it up and make sure it's the same distance. Over time, um, these ends will, especially if you're printing a lot, will start to get warped and you have to trim it and trim it and trim it. So do my tubing a little bit longer than need be because, you know, like I said, if you do a lot of printing and you do higher temperatures, um, it's just wear and tear. It's the same thing as like changing the tires out on your car. Like the more you drive it, the faster you're gonna have to do that. So head and start putting the hot end. I'm gonna get some of these things out of the way. Uh, this is our hot end fan and I'm gonna unplug this one. It does have a bead of glue on the bottom. Loosen that bead and then just pull it off. Very important, the CR6 SE fans are 24 volt. Ender 5, CR10S when I had it, and my CR10S Pro, those all have 24 volt fan. We can now go ahead and take our new hot end and put it on. Mount this in place first. You never want to, especially the thermistor, plug this in and let it hang because there are actually little uh, resistors in here. And if those break or snap or anything, the way this works, it, you could even get a thermal runaway error and then have to do this whole process over. So I'm gonna kind of just lean these up here. Get at least one screw in there. All right, once you get one in there, go ahead and plug the thermistor in first. And that's good to go. Put my second screw in at the top. If you want, you can turn your machine on and just preheat PLA, preheat ABS, whatever. Just make sure you don't get any error codes. Uh, but if your thermistor is damaged, this will say negative 15. This is saying 30. So we already know that the thermistor is working. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit ready and then preheat PLA. So we're in a good spot here. We can see that the temperature is going up. So uh, we have installed the thermistor properly. Have the factory screws in the new housing here. So we'll go ahead and get this screwed in place. duct is on nice and tight. I am going to check these lead screws that I tell you about just to make sure that they're tight. These actually seem really tight. This thing has been a workhorse. You can tell how, I mean, if you look on the side here, I mean, there's just tons of PLA debris and everything. Uh, really great printer. Next, what we're going to do is start getting these fans in here. Just temporarily turn the machine off. It's nice and cool to start unplugging that and putting the fans on. Uh, so here is the new Winston fan. This is a dual bearing. Uh, so this is going to be a lot quieter and a lot more efficient. Old fan is just held in place by these two little screws here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those taken off. All right. So old fan is off. We will need the factory fan duct. Uh, this is just a better duct there. So we want to use that. This harness is pretty long. Um, you can cut it down if you want. So that snaps in place and it goes like that. We want the label facing towards the hot end. We want the fan. It's gonna pull air in here and shoot it out there. Got that guy mounted in there and it, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to get that one 
uh, done, but that's why they have this hole so you can kind of angle the Allen wrench through to tighten it. You're still doing it inch, inch by inch. It's, it's absolutely terrible. The old cooling fan, we still have it plugged in, so you can go ahead and unplug that. And of course, if you're not doing the fan upgrades, you can just go right ahead after you have the hot end done and do the, the uh, Bowden tube, PTFE tube install. Uh, I'm gonna show you here that momentarily. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug this one in. And we can see that the fan kicks on. A little bit quieter. Definitely should uh, reduce a little bit of noise and increase cooling efficiency. Next is the 40 millimeter. Let me get this moved here. The 40 millimeter upgrade. You got the, once again, the Winston fans. This is a hydraulic fan and this is the RGB. So it lights up. Again, you don't have to do this. You can go with a standard 30. You'll be able to use the factory screws, the factory shroud, everything else. Because this is bigger, we don't have extra screws. We use that factory shroud to hold it in place. Uh, we're gonna need some screws to go on here. So uh, M3s will work. Just take some one inch M3s and go ahead and mount the fan on the new duct. These are just long enough to where they will thread and grab, but they're not too long to where they will penetrate through the back and hit any uh, wires or anything. So let me get this guy mounted and see how it works. All right, so now that all that is left is to install our Capricorn tube and the silicone sock preheat abs because we want the hot end to be nice and hot you noticed before when i tried taking that ptfe tube off how good of a seal i got we we want to replicate that again with the new capricorn tube here just verify that your tube is cut nice and straight so it creates a nice seal 222 degrees right now so i'm gonna push this tube down and what we want to do is get it to where it hits the nozzle and just keep pushing down and then take our coupler, slide that on, give it a turn or two so it's in place. We want to go ahead and sometimes you need a flathead screwdriver, put the pin on because we don't want this tube moving when we make our final turns. Just make sure that is nice and tight. Go ahead and connect the other end of your Bowden tube. The reason why we did that is, let's say this is the bottom of your nozzle and this is the tube. By pushing it all the way down and giving this a couple turns and then putting that pin in place, as we tighten it, it's just gonna push it down more. You're ensuring a really, really good seal. Uh, that's what I did on this hot end and this will not, this will not come off. I mean, this is, a very solid seal. Then with the CR6SC, you wanna go ahead and put your silicone sock on. Just be very careful. I like doing this when it's when it's hot, just because again, it creates a nice, a nice seal. Just go ahead and get this carriage on. You can see here we are cruising, uh, 240 degrees, no problem. Hands are working, and yes, I still have a dirty screen, which I'm gonna go ahead and clean that off now. Uh, that this is all done, but we're just going to throw some uh, filament through here real quick, make sure everything looks good, and I'll wrap this video up. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Uh, just a nice little repair and upgrade on the CR6SE. Obviously, this is something that is going to happen uh, on 3D printers. The more you use them, the more you're going to have to repair parts over time. I can already tell that those fans are definitely a lot quieter. And just by holding my hand over the uh, carriage there, I can definitely see increased airflow. So hopefully it equates to some better printing. And of course, if it does, I'll be sure to share it with you. You know, pretty straightforward repair and modification there. Biggest thing I can say with that fan duct is you are going to have to grind down uh, that factory fan shroud uh, if you want to use it. Uh, my biggest worry is I do print with PETG in this from time to time, so I didn't want to just print that duct in PETG and then have it warp or anything because that is going to affect cooling. I didn't want to leave any stone unturned, so uh, I filed that down. It is a tight fit. I did have to do it about two times before I got it exact, uh, but it will fit. You will need both screws up in the top just to keep everything completely flush, making sure the fans are blowing over the nozzle. Uh, so far, so good. And if you don't want to do that, 
Uh, it's very easy. You can still get those RGB, those Winston fans, whether it be a dual bearing or hydraulic. They're a lot quieter. Uh, they give you a lot better cooling, more efficient cooling. Definitely going to help improve your prints, regardless of what fan size you do. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. If you liked it or it helped you, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, go ahead and drop me a comment in the comment section. If you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, Funko Pops, all the stuff we're doing on the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I do have a ton more videos just over the horizon. I'm gonna be doing a couple more upgrades to some of the other printers I have. So if you do enjoy any of that, make sure to subscribe, click the notification bell, and come back and see me. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. I wanna thank you once again for watching the video. Any questions in this video, whether it's regarding the hot end swap, the fan install, uh, the Capricorn tube install, anything, be sure to drop me a comment in the comment section. You know I will hit you back. But that's it for today. So until next time, it's DW out. Later.